I was driving home from work pretty late one night. I often worked late. And during this time, I would leave work at about 10.30 p.m. and get back home at about 11 o'clock. My job was in the city, and I lived a ways outside of it in a much quieter area. After leaving my job, I would take a freeway back for most of the drive and then exit onto a highway. One time, when I was working earlier and there was a traffic jam, I found a shortcut to get home faster. It involved a few more turns, but no stoplights, and, in my opinion, offered easier driving, or at least driving that I preferred. Depending on traffic, it would either be slightly faster or slightly slower. On a night like this, when there was virtually no traffic because it was late, it was probably slightly longer. But I was in the habit of taking the shortcut route. It had started when I worked earlier shifts and got off when the roads were busy. On this night, I was taking some back roads to my house. These roads were very quiet, with some woods and occasionally quiet neighborhoods or people's houses on the sides. I was probably about 10 minutes away from my house. The roads that I was driving on were very quiet and I really wasn't seeing any other vehicles. This is exactly how I liked it and it made for easy driving. As I was going down a straight spot in the road, I saw something up ahead. There was what looked like some kind of construction going on. As I got closer, I noticed a few orange cones and then a person holding a sign on the right. It was one of those stop signs that lights up, and a construction worker holding it directs traffic. There was a man in an orange vest holding the sign and standing on the side of the road. Now, I was on a one-lane road, and there was a lane for traffic going in the opposite direction as well. However, that lane was blocked by two orange construction cones. I began slowing down as I got closer. When I did, I started to wonder what exactly was going on here. There was only one person that I could see, the guy holding the sign, no other construction workers in sight. And other than the few cones, I didn't know what kind of work was being done. Still, I didn't pay it all that much attention. I was tired from a long day of work and just wanted to get home. I slowed my car down, and the guy was holding the stop sign, so I came to a stop. When I did, the guy holding the sign started walking into the middle of the road, right in front of my car. I remember that the guy, the man, about average height with long, dark brown hair and a bit of a goatee, when he started walking over to my car, I began to really wonder what exactly was going on. The guy then stopped about a foot away from my car, directly in front of it. He was just kind of looking at me, but not saying anything or communicating in any way. I sat there with a puzzled look on my face. I saw the guy looking back behind my car, and out of the corner of my eye in my side mirror, I noticed another man. This guy was not a construction worker. He emerged seemingly from the woods on the side of the road. It was really bizarre. But even more strange was that this man was holding what appeared to be a baseball bat. He was approaching my car from behind and was about 50 feet away, if I had to guess. I wondered what on earth was happening. I just wanted to drive away. There seemed to be no real construction going on and this whole thing was beginning to look like a trap. Meanwhile, the guy holding the sign was still there, stopping me from going. I rolled down my window just a crack and asked what was going on. The guy did not answer me. The man with the bat was still approaching from behind and now getting closer. I knew I needed to get out of there, and suddenly I put my car into reverse. I backed up just a few feet when I did, the man with the bat was less than 10 feet away. Then, I veered to the left extremely fast and swerved away from the man holding the sign. 
He tried to go in front of me, but was not fast enough, and I drove away. I ran over the two orange cones, but luckily, they were the smaller kind. As I sped away from there, I saw the two men now standing together in the middle of the road. I felt lucky to have narrowly escaped that situation. Before I got home, I called the police and reported what happened. But I'm guessing by the time an officer got there, the men were gone. I continued to drive that same route home after that. It became just a routine that I didn't really think to change. Well, just about a week after the incident, I was driving home once again. It was around the same time, maybe 10.30 or 11 o'clock at night. I came up to just about the same part on the quiet road, and I could not believe my eyes when I saw the guy holding a stop sign again, and the two cones on the road in the same exact spot as before. How could this be happening? As I got closer, I could see that it was the same front of me, and I decided to pull into the left lane to pass the car. As I got closer, I recognized the driver. It was the same guy who had cut me off earlier. He seemed to notice me too, and we made eye contact briefly. However, instead of looking apologetic, he had a smirk on his face. It was unsettling, but I brushed it off and continued driving. The traffic started to flow a bit better, and I was making good progress. I had almost forgotten about the earlier incident when, suddenly, the car that cut me off earlier aggressively accelerated and pulled up beside me. The driver rolled down his window and started yelling something at me. I couldn't make out the words over the traffic noise, but his aggressive demeanor alarmed me. I decided to ignore him and focused on the road ahead. However, the situation escalated quickly. The guy swerved towards my car, forcing me to veer to the left to avoid a collision. I honked my horn in frustration, but he continued his aggressive behavior. It became clear that he was intentionally trying to intimidate me. Feeling threatened, I reached for my phone to call the police. As I dialed the number, the guy suddenly sped up and cut in front of me again. This time, he slammed on his brakes, causing me to do the same to avoid a collision. The road rage was becoming increasingly dangerous. I managed to change lanes and put some distance between us, but he continued to tailgate me aggressively. It was a terrifying experience, especially since I was still about 10 minutes away from the quieter roads leading to my house. I couldn't shake the feeling that this person was deliberately targeting me. As I approached the exit for the quieter roads, I made a split-second decision to take it, hoping to lose the aggressive driver in the calmer residential areas. I navigated the turns quickly and discreetly, glancing in my rearview mirror to see if he followed. Thankfully, after a few minutes, I didn't see his car behind me anymore. Shaken and relieved, I continued my drive home, constantly checking my surroundings. I arrived safely, but the unsettling encounter lingered in my mind. I reported the road rage incident to the police, providing a description of the driver and his car. However, I never heard anything back. From that day on, I became more cautious during my commute always keeping an eye out for any signs of aggression on the road. The incident served as a chilling reminder of how quickly a routine drive can turn into a harrowing experience. Parked. I was feeling brave, I guess, because I didn't feel in any danger at all. I think I was more mad than anything. After I got out, I walked behind my car and looked at the man. He was still inside his car with the engine running. I yelled out to him, asking what his problem was. Then suddenly, the man started driving. He started going up my driveway and heading straight for me. It was like he was trying to run me over. I jumped back and ran behind my car, which was all I had time to do. 
He got close, but then slammed on his brakes and stopped just a few feet away from the back of my car. Then he turned to the left where I was and started driving forward. I just ran around to my backyard, trying to get away from him. He didn't hit me and stopped at the end of my driveway after I had reached safety. I couldn't believe the audacity of this person. I stayed hidden in my backyard, not wanting to confront him anymore. I heard his car reverse and drive away, and only then did I feel safe enough to go back into my house. I immediately called the police and reported the entire incident, providing them with a description of the man and his vehicle. I also mentioned the previous road rage encounter a few months ago. The police assured me that they would investigate the matter. In the following days, I took extra precautions during my commute, varying my routes and being hyper aware of my surroundings. I never encountered the aggressive driver again, but the fear and frustration from that night lingered. It was a stark reminder of the unpredictability and potential danger that can arise on the road. I hoped that the police would be able to identify and apprehend this aggressive driver before he posed a threat to someone else. Curious about why my car was there with the hazard lights on, I continued walking towards the gas station, not thinking much about it. I knew I'd need to return with the gas soon. As I walked, the quietness of the night surrounded me, and the only sounds were my footsteps and the distant hum of the highway. The road was dimly lit, and the woods on both sides added an eerie atmosphere. After about ten minutes of walking, I heard the unmistakable sound of the same pickup truck approaching from behind. This time, it slowed down next to me, and the driver rolled down the window. Inside, there were two men, and they asked if I needed a ride. I hesitated for a moment, feeling a bit uneasy about accepting a ride from strangers. However, the offer seemed innocent enough, and I was still a bit away from the gas station. I thanked them, but declined the offer, explaining that I was just heading to the gas station to get some fuel for my car. They seemed friendly enough, but something about the situation felt off. They nodded, and the driver said, all right, take care, before driving away. I continued my walk to the gas station and filled up the small container with gas. On the way back, I couldn't shake off a strange feeling. I wondered why those men had stopped by my car and then circled back to offer me a ride. It felt like more than just a friendly gesture. When I reached my car, everything seemed undisturbed. I poured the gas into the tank, started the engine, and continued my drive home. As I pulled into my driveway, I couldn't shake off the lingering sense of unease from that encounter. Since that night, I've become more cautious about accepting help from strangers, even in seemingly harmless situations. The experience served as a reminder trust should be approached carefully, especially in vulnerable situations like being stranded on the side of the road late at night. Of running through the dense woods, I slowed down and tried to make as little noise as possible. I crouched behind a cluster of bushes, catching my breath and desperately hoping they wouldn't find me. I could hear the sounds of the men moving through the woods, their footsteps crunching on leaves and snapping twigs. The adrenaline pumping through my veins made every rustle in the foliage sound like a potential threat. Peeking through the branches, I saw the first guy scanning the area, looking in my direction. He seemed determined to find me. I held my breath, praying that he wouldn't see me hiding in the shadows. After what felt like an eternity, the man gave up and rejoined his accomplice at the truck. They conferred briefly, and I strained to hear their muffled voices. It became clear that they were frustrated and agitated, 
probably realizing that I had managed to evade them. I took advantage of this momentary distraction and cautiously continued moving deeper into the woods, making a wide arc to avoid their line of sight. The night was pitch black, and the only source of light came from the dim glow of their truck. I stumbled over uneven terrain, trying to stay quiet but swift. My heart raced, and every crack of a twig beneath my foot felt like an alarm. The woods seemed to stretch on endlessly, but I pushed forward, determined to put as much distance between me and those men as possible. Eventually, the sounds of the men and their truck faded into the distance. I slowed my pace, cautiously emerging from the woods when I felt it was safe. I continued walking toward the gas station. My senses heightened and on high alert. When I finally reached the gas station, I explained the situation to the attendants and they called the police. I provided them with a detailed description of the men and their truck. The police searched the area but couldn't locate the individuals. The incident left me shaken and more vigilant about my surroundings especially during late night drives. It served as a stark reminder of the potential dangers that can lurk in seemingly quiet and isolated areas. Straight and as fast as I could through the woods, I reached the other side. I saw a house with a massive yard and kept running. I no longer heard the guy behind me. As I got closer to the house, I ran behind it, caught my breath, and tried to figure out what to do at this hour. I didn't want to knock on the front door, thinking they might not answer. I waited for several minutes and then carefully headed back down their driveway to the street. It was a really long driveway and eventually I got back to the street I had been walking on. The men and the truck were nowhere in sight. I continued my walk to the gas station but stayed extremely close to the edge of the woods. That way, if I saw the truck coming, I could quickly go back in. When I heard a car approaching not long after I started walking again, I jumped into the woods, hiding and waiting for it to pass. I couldn't tell if it was the truck or not, so I had no idea if it actually was. Still, I wasn't going to take any chances. Eventually, I did make it to the gas station. I walked back to my car, filled my tank with what I bought, and then made it home after what was a very memorable night, looking back. I don't know what those men wanted or who they were. Still, I'm really glad that I got away from them. In retrospect, that harrowing night remains etched in my memory. A stark reminder of the unpredictability of life and the potential dangers lurking in seemingly quiet places. I may never know the true intentions of those mysterious men or what could have unfolded had I not managed to escape into the woods. This experience has left an indelible mark, prompting me to become more cautious and vigilant in my everyday life. It's a testament to the importance of staying aware of our surroundings, especially during vulnerable situations. While I may never fully understand the motives behind that night's events, I am grateful for the opportunity to share my story and hope that it serves as a reminder to others to prioritize their safety and trust their instincts. As I continue my journey, I carry with me the lessons learned from that fateful night. Life's roads may be unpredictable, but by staying alert and making informed decisions, we empower ourselves to navigate the twists and turns that come our way. 